A tropical cyclone is currently developing near Oaxaca, Mexico. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for May 28th. Right now, we are still showing no active tropical cyclones, but for how much longer? Probably not much. It's code yellow on T-Coast right now as we are looking for a potential tropical cyclone to strike Mexico towards the end of the weekend into early next week. But first, in the Atlantic, it's four days until hurricane season, and I'm happy to say that things are still looking fairly quiet, with nothing expected in the next five days. That would mean no early season start for the first time since probably 2014 or some silly date like that. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking at this 90% area that everyone's been talking about, Invest 91E. Um, which is very nearly a tropical cyclone at this point and we expect that the National Hurricane Center will call it one within the next 24 hours. In the Western Pacific there is nothing active right now so still staying fairly quiet but we do expect that it will start up again uh, fairly soon. It is getting towards the time of year. Uh, maybe one or two surprises that we haven't seen more than two storms so far this year there. And in the Indian Ocean, there are no areas of interest right now either. Um, just a little mention to the Australian region whilst we're here. Uh, there is a small little area that has been marked as an invest, 92, I think it was, S. Um, but that's not going to do anything either. Here's some satellite imagery of Invest 91E right now. And you can see it trying to get itself together, rather elongated east to west. Rotation has been increasing, especially on the visible imagery, maybe not so much on the infrared that we're looking at right now, but it is getting rather tantalizingly close to becoming our first um, tropical cyclone of the year, although it may not become a named storm immediately because it doesn't yet have tropical storm force winds. Looking at the wide shots, this is the Atlantic right now and you can see um, a detached frontal system there moving through the United States, the East Coast. Lots of dry air on either side of that that you can see quite clearly um, and a lot of moisture over the Yucatan in particular, uh, partly to do with that invest. And here's a look from the Eastern Pacific perspective and you can see just how much influence that invest does have right now, real inflammation of the intertropical convergence zone. Um, and the first real sign of anything forming this year so far in this region. Lots of dry air out to sea, however. Western Pacific has lost its game a little bit. It's uh, not producing much right now. Um, one or two little areas that might be of slight interest, uh, but I doubt we're going to see much come out of that over the next five days. So the Western Pacific overall pretty quiet. Now towards the Indian Ocean and you can see what we're looking at there as well. Huge amounts of moisture actually over the Malay Peninsula into Indochina and also along the coast of Indonesia. And you can see down there towards the Australian region, that little thing trying to form there looks like an extremely terrible looking cyclone, although it isn't one at all. And into the South um, Pacific there, you can also see an extratropical system pushing by the east coast of Australia. If it was a little bit further north, it might have had a chance. And the odd little bit of normal convection that's occurring um, in the equatorial zones. How are sea surface temperatures faring? Well, already a little dent in that 30 degrees Celsius water underneath Invest 91E. So that may be an inhibitor looking forward with upwelling already occurring. The Atlantic Ocean is warming up, particularly the hot spots in the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf Stream are pushing 20 degrees in a lot of those areas now. Western Caribbean pushing 30 in one or two areas and the Eastern Caribbean also getting to 28 now, um, quite largely around the uh, Windward Islands. The uh, Indian Ocean and the South China Sea looking warm. Looks like the uh, northern part near Hong Kong has uh, really started to come on now um, with the uh, gradients increasing there. And the uh, Philippine Sea also starting to get a few 30 degree temperature readings there now as well. That's changed a lot in the last three or four days since my last tropical weather bulletin. 
So I imagine compared to normals that we're going to look at next, that it's caught up a little bit. Um, but certainly decent temperatures across the board there in the Western Pacific now. Looking at the normals there, yep, it's recovered in the South China Sea, not fully, but to an extent. Um, the La Nina effect still very clearly visible, Eastern Pacific warmer than normal, and so is the Atlantic. I also want to point out a massive cool pool there in the Persian Gulf, just a little point of interest there um, as we look towards the western parts. Oceanic heat content. If you've been watching these graphics closely, it's been increasing quite a lot in the Western Atlantic, or Western Caribbean, I should say, into the Gulf of Mexico. And in the Eastern Pacific, you'll notice that it hasn't changed very much there. Western Pacific's been increasing just a little bit, uh, but oceanic heat content will not help invest 91E. That's the main takeaway in context of what we're looking at at the moment. So what does the GFS have in store for this storm? Well, it's been an outlier easterly and with intensity. And there it is, still swiping back towards the northeast and becoming probably a category three before impacting the western part of Oaxaca in Mexico. There it is again, forming very soon and then becoming that hurricane. Other models take it further west and we discussed this at length in our live stream earlier today. Looking at the precipitation charts, you'll also note here that the precipitation charts are showing that it's going to be very high generally along the coast. Uh, and this is probably going to be rather irrespective of how strong the storm becomes. Massive rainfall amounts at sea, but along the coastal areas there, let's get some numbers. 17 inches generally is the agreed maximums in the next five days only along the coast there of Oaxaca and Chiapas in Mexico. Um, 10 inches there, I think that's even extending into Guatemala. So we're looking at very chunky rainfall totals coming out of this 91E. At longer range, we look towards the Atlantic and what's left of the energy from 91E becomes potentially a tropical storm that uh, grazes eastern Florida and then out to sea. Whether it becomes fully tropical or not, that's hard to tell there on that imagery. It eventually becomes post-tropical, of course. Here's another look at it again going through Cuba. Lost struggle storm force winds in green and following it northeastwards you can see where it eventually reaches its demise. Obviously storms at this time of year won't get very far north. And now that the uh, important stuff is done you can take a look at Force 13's merch store where you can uh, take a look at all our products, scan that code to get instant access to the store and of course we now do animation requests as well on there. So looking into silly range, let's see what else we can come up with. There it is, a very large uh, cyclone, whether it's tropical or not, I have no idea, but there it is, sweeping up the US East Coast. Um, that would be one to uh, certainly be interested about if it was a reliable uh, forecast, but it isn't. As it is right now, that is just a fairy tale of an extremely large tropical cyclone, maybe impacting the US East Coast, but that would be a bit of a busy start to the season in its own way. Well, on this day, on May 28th, 1958, first I need to quantify why it says 11L. It's not a typo, but it's because it was a storm that was designated after the fact. So after the season had gone through all of its numbers, they went back and called that one a storm and they called it 11 because that would have been the because they can't do two ones and they just did that. But anyway, the category five on the right hand side was Phyllis, a very powerful typhoon which was currently peaking with 175 mile per hour winds. Back in 2022, the first name on the Atlantic naming list is Alex in the Eastern Pacific. We might be about to get Agatha. In the Central Pacific, well, there's going to be no joke tonight because it's me and I have a very straight face. The next name on list one is Hone. In the Western Pacific, on list four, the next name is Chaba. And in the North Indian Ocean, we've got Citrang coming up next. So far, I've had 26 storms this year around the world. The average per year is 92. In the Australian region, the next name is Darien. In the southwest Indian Ocean, there's just over a month left for Letlama. And in the South Pacific, the next name now is Harley. That's all from us tonight. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.